Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Best Mountain Farm. Today is gonna be a little bit different. Uh, not doing much work on this, oh, excuse me, this video. But we're gonna do some fun stuff with Papa Hugh. We're gonna take and show you guys and talk a little bit about the tractors we have uh, here on the farm. And then we are gonna to go to the antique tractor show at our county fairground and walk around let papa hugh show us and tell us about some of the tractors that are over there so it's always interesting to see just how much random knowledge my dad has about farm implements so you guys will get to see some of that what is this one huh? what is this one super a farm what year 1950 my uncle, well, my dad's uncle, my great uncle, bought it new in South Carolina and then somewhere along 55, 56, daddy bought it from him and went to South Carolina and hauled it home. That would have been a slow trip before we said the Chevrolet truck because that's what he hauled it home on. It was a 47 Chevrolet two-ton. Of course, it, it would run as fast as the roads would tolerate then. But this one, hey. it needs painted. The only thing wrong with it's flat tire, but it runs really good. We play. He was getting the garden ready uh, the potato patch the other day for putting the potatoes in. My taters get up good. I'm gonna heal them up with it too. That's what this stuff under here is for. <clears throat> so you can set off your rows and yeah, that's a cultivator up here. And I've got the corn planter, and by the planter that goes right here, bean planter, corn planter, whatever, and then there's a fertilizer distributor that goes right here. I've got it too, and it's all in working order. We just don't raise tobacco. We don't row crop anymore, so there's really not much need for it. So it's, it's in the dry. Only thing that tractor needs is a good paint job. One of these days, maybe we'll get around to it. That's in the dry, I'm not worried about it. Aaron, you can let Shiloh come in. You gotta cut the gas on. <laughs> I always do that on the 8 in. If you don't, well, it, it, I didn't have it cut off, so it may be out of gas. I don't know why we even fool with it. It don't get used but twice <laughs> a year most of the time. Yeah, but it's nice to have it. Huh? It's nice to have it. For a 70 year old tractor, it runs pretty good. It's uh, not very useful though. No, nah, but it's fun to drive. No, it ain't. <laughs> the thing is uncomfortable as hell is what that thing is. Clutch it for $150. So this is our Eight in it was my grandpa, same thing. Family tractor. This one's a 48, 49? 48 mile. 48 mile. <clears throat> he bought it in 1953 when he came home from Korea. You guys saw me use this one a little bit around the uh, homestead down in Georgia, and then the clutch went out, so. Well, that's it, uh, the only thing wrong with it, the lift works and everything else. And uh, we'll. Uh, We'll get it fixed sometime this year, I hope. Cause it's a, they're pretty much, they're one step ahead of a horse, but they're pretty handy just for a utility tractor. It's fast, that's one thing about it. It's fast for a tractor, so it'll basically be used with a box behind it to move it's stuff good from point A tractor. to point B. I mowed a lot of hay with this tractor. All right, well those are our tractors and now we're gonna go look at some that are maybe in a little bit prettier condition. Not necessarily working better, but prettier. What is that, a 41? Oh, it's a 52? We need one of these for the dogs. This is so cute. 
the train. I can ride on the back, you can drive it. And the dogs can go in between. We need a dog tractor trailer, Mom. Put mm -hmm. all the dogs in the barrels. <laughs> Yeah, that's how you make ice cream. Yeah. Is it a John Deere? It's a tiny box of John Deere. This is how you. This is how we need to make ice cream. I need to make one of these. That's an ice cream maker. Is it serious? Yeah. That is a. That is the best family size ice cream maker because that's about how much you have to make. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These chainsaws didn't come from right here, these come from out west. Okay, do some damage. Huh? Do some damage. They had an old big German solo that had like a 60 inch bar on it, two man chainsaw. I could see this. Uh, going bad in a lot of ways if you weren't careful. <laughs> Which end's the dangerous end? I don't think I, I don't think I'd want Miss Corey over there on that end. This is a death trap. Huh? That's a big what is that? Chainsaw. Chainsaw? Yeah. One person holds here and there's the motor. So you'd be on that end and, or on this end and take it off and Wow. That's for cutting big ones. I could see that going very wrong. No, Papa. We don't need it. Stop looking. <laughs> I wouldn't have it. That's a, that's a bounce to an 8 Ford with an updated engine in it. Yeah. The lift's the same. So it's got a... Well, it's got a live lift. See, that's, that's what there. we need to get Mom for her cart for flowering. I want to get her an economy tractor. She needs a little cub like that. That's cute. That little it's cub. A dually. <laughs> SU stands for short utility. We need uh, them was hellacious tractors too. They is good. I need a bunch of them weights to put on the back of mine. Those are called suitcase weights. Well, they're about 60 pounds a piece. Oh no, they're pretty they heavy. You should say on the side. Oh, look. Oh, look. Oh, that's pretty cool. Row crop tractor. I thought the row crops were offset. No. This is a big row crop tractor. 1958. The front wheels run between the rows and the rear wheels. You had them set to go on the outside of two rows. See, it's a row crop. 961 row crop. Those are all weights, huh? That's all. That's nothing but weight. This tractor's about 70 horsepower. Is it? I'm going to use five gallon of gas of air. Oh, a big tractor for its day. Big two cylinder pump pack. Oh, that only two cylinder? Two cylinders. John Deere was big on the two cylinders. Massey Ferguson's and Ford's were more popular around here because you had a Ford dealership in Clyde and the Massey Ferguson dealership was out there where it's at now. 165 I think 175 165 I think this is an orchard tractor see how low profile it is oh yeah somebody painted them some even. custom emblems there this ain't even an eye tractor this is a high tractor you know how you can tell this is the industrial badge. The egg badge is totally different. I want to ride in that. 
Okay. There's adults in it. <laughs> I thought it was for kids. <laughs> now this is a super safe. And this is the same way you were talking about on yeah. our farm off or yeah, something. Yeah, this, this should say super right here instead of just C. Because see it has hydraulics on it. A regular C wouldn't have had hydraulics, it would have been mechanical. How does all this work? Huh? How, do, what is all, how does all this stuff work? It's all chain drive. I mean, what is, do you put your... It's a corn planter, you put your seeds in here and they got different plates. See this plate with a hole in it? They got plates with different size holes for different seed. Bean, beans are really small and corns are a little bigger and then if you get into a big bean like a lima bean they're a bigger hole. And it just drops it down and it runs down this tube. This right here makes a little ditch and then it drops it you see down there and it's time to get, to get them so far apart and then this closes your row back up. And this right here is your wheel scraper. So you can plant two rows at a time. Yes, two rows at a time. This is a super We're planting safe. seeds. And this right here is part of the cultivator setup. Miss Corey's waiting her turn to go for a ride. <laughs> Seven twenty. This one may be tens. Big bugger hair style. 720 diesel, two cylinder diesel. With power steering, that's really odd. I know Pond Tim has a 720 with power steering. That's the reason I'm saying it's Tim's. Yes, we probably know 90% of the owners of these tractors, I would say. Or he does. I don't see a side on it, but it could very well be Tim's. This is a LI or a LA. I believe it's a LA. That's about like a that's about like an eight in forward. <laughs> well, we need, we need to get Papa Houston shirts. <laughs> <laughs> put a little bit better shirt. Hey, this one's fine. Okay. <laughs> it's still mostly shades. <laughs> He's going to have sunburn spots. He's going to look like a leopard. Yes, he is. <laughs> uh, Traction boost rod, is that just a locking to lock the back wheels up? What is it? Traction booster? Yeah. Just lock the back wheels up? <laughs> yeah. Differential lock. What are most of these? Well, these were more popular. This is a 135. Oh, it's a 230, but this is the later model one master one. See, this is an egg decal. That was pretty. Minneapolis Moline. They weren't real popular down here, but. Uh, the state used to have a lot of them to mow with. Look right here. If you rebuild this engine right here, they don't have an oil pan. The oil pan's all cast in the block if you take a crankshaft out through that access point right there. Fun. This is what they call a funk conversion. Yeah, I'm thinking a flathead V8 didn't come stock in one of these. <laughs> a company not called Funk made this adapter and made all this sheet metal stuff because you had to pick a sheet metal and everything up. That's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? You had to extend these. Well, you turned it from 25 horsepower to 110. On an 8 end, that seems dangerous. I bet you could stand the back wheels completely up on this thing. They'd probably tire them off of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you definitely want the roll bar and you want to keep that on there. Look at look, dual exhaust. <laughs> dual exhaust <laughs> with chrome tips. Yep. 
It That's used like to be Robert's red. tractor. Huh? It used to be red. Yeah. <laughs> this end have been painted like the ABM Ford. They painted it Ferguson gray. Forerunner to the 8-in. The engine's the same as the 8-in. Oh goodness, there's another one with big... That's got a 392 in it. That's ridiculous. 392 cubic inches. An easiest way to tell. On the 392, you got three bolt exhaust flanges because they had bigger exhaust. So 345 just had two bolt exhaust flanges. Information everyone should know. <laughs> no, I worked for International for two or three years. Yeah, a good zillion years ago. That's a big motor. <laughs> you ain't kidding. <laughs> That's the forerunner. This is before Massey and Ferguson merged. It was Massey Harris. There used to be a lot of them around here. Oh, they don't. They don't have the rest of the workings with it. That's a piece of an old trans mechanical transplanter. So when. So when you'd set, I know we use them for tobacco core, you had a, a wheel here that, that went down and it came and it would put them in the ground. So you'd have your like tobacco plants, little tobacco plants. I've seen those. Then you'd sit there and drive and just you just toss them down set it. Yeah, you'd set them in the tobacco, bat, 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 the, the setter and it'd put them in the ground. And this barrel would put the liquid yep. in the ground. one big ugly tractor. Definitely wasn't made for looks. It's kind of like the long. This ain't supposed to be on the distance. Yeah. Yeah, somebody spent a lot of time with some aluminum. <laughs> that's stainless steel. No, that's aluminum. They made them in the right style, though. If you didn't have back problems, one riding that and you would. Where in the heck did he find this thing? Absolutely, my gracious. Uh, That's incredible. Yeah, uh, it was my brother, him and another guy, Lynn. Uh huh. Or he was the car. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick, he's from over there, you know, but uh, he lives in Florida. He done a lot of this for us, like this. Well, was there anything specific that inspired him to build something like this, or just... No, he just... Just wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's a beautiful piece of work. Only thing you miss since I came a horse. With a tractor for everybody.
diesel with a distributor and a carburetor. Hmm. This is an early, early diesel. And you cranked it on gasoline, it has a compression release. You cranked mm. it on gasoline when the operating temperature come up. You shoved a compression release in and it engaged the injection pump. So at least it was starting cold weather. It would. Play this lever right here, engage the injection pump. And then this one right here is your compression release. He just had a little valve in the head and the, it opened the valve. Oh, they were, they were good engines. They run that up into the late 50s. We need to get Kayaya Cub Cadet and paint it purple. <laughs> it's purple. Oh, that's cute. Better than I do. <laughs>